Next section, the life of the Buddha, inevitable old age, and uh, the uh, <coughs> the first reading is is from uh, Sangyutta Three Sutta Number Twenty Five, and uh, Sangyutta three is uh, the what's called the Kosala Sutta, uh, Kosala Sangyutta, and uh, it's a collection of twenty-five conversations uh, that the Buddha had with King Pasenadi, and I mean they're all quite interesting. This one in particular is concerning kind of old age, uh, and uh, but they cover a large range of topics and over a period of time. Uh, because uh, both of the, uh, say, King Pasenadi and uh <coughs> and and uh, and the Buddha were around the same age, and uh, so that they were uh, very much contemporaries, and uh, the uh, but the say the various conversations that they had covered. Like old, this one in particular is uh, certainly about old age, and then uh, I'm going to read another one, uh, which is the the king himself reflecting on his own uh, mortality. Uh, but there's other suttas that cover like this. Uh, there's what going to when King Pasenadi's grandmother died, and and uh, uh, or uh, uh, also when uh, his. Uh, his wife um, um, uh, passed away, and that, uh, uh, and he was really uh, uh, struck with uh, tremendous grief. Um, but anyway, here we are with with this uh, Samyutta three Sutta number twenty five. <coughs> And this is, of course, quite a well-known sutta, but I wanted to read the whole one because of the the verses at the end and a little bit of uh, a bit more. It's a bit more filled out. Okay. At Savati, then in the middle of the day, King Pasenadi of Kosala approached the Blessed One. The Blessed One said to him as he was sitting to one side, now, where are you coming from, great king, in the middle of the day? Just now, venerable sir, I have been engaged in those affairs of kingship typical for head-anointed Katiya kings who are intoxicated with the intoxication of sovereignty, who are obsessed by greed for sensual pleasures, who have attained stable control in their country, and who rule having conquered a great sphere of territory on earth. And uh, a certain amount of irony involved in that uh, with the uh, king kind of seeing his own uh, uh, folly to a certain extent uh, but uh, absolutely uh, caught up in it what do you think great king <coughs> here a man would come to you from the east one who is trustworthy and reliable having approached <coughs> he would tell you <coughs> for sure great king you should know this I am coming from the east, and there I saw a great mountain, <coughs> high as the clouds, coming this way, crushing all living beings. Do whatever you think should be done, great king. Then a second man would come to you from the west, then a third man would come to you from the north, then a fourth man would come to you from the south, one who is trustworthy and reliable. Having approached, he would tell you, for sure, great king, you should know this. I am coming from the south, and there I saw a great mountain, high as the clouds, coming this way, crushing all living beings. Do whatever you think should be done, great king. If, great king, such a great peril should arise, such a terrible destruction of human life, the human state being so difficult to obtain, what should be done? If, venerable sir, such a great peril should arise, such a terrible destruction of human life, the human state being so difficult to obtain, what else should be done 
but to live by the Dhamma, to live righteously and to do wholesome and meritorious deeds. I inform you, great king, I announce to you, great king, aging and death are rolling in on you. When aging and death are rolling in on you, great king, what should be done? As aging and death are rolling in on me, venerable sir, what else should be done but to live by the Dhamma? To live righteously and to do wholesome and meritorious deeds. <clears throat> there are, venerable sir, elephant battles fought by head-anointed Katya kings who are intoxicated with the intoxicational sovereignty, who are obsessed by greed for sensual pleasures, who have attained stable control in their country, and who rule having conquered a great sphere of territory on earth. But there is no place for those elephant battles, no scope for them when aging and death are rolling in. There are, venerable sir, cavalry battles fought by head-anointed Katya kings. There are chariot battles, infantry battles. But there is no place for those infantry battles, no scope for them <coughs> when aging and death are rolling in. In this royal court, venerable sir, there are counselors who, when the enemies arrive, are capable of dividing them by subterfuge but there is no place for those battles of subterfuge, no scope for them when aging and death are rolling in. In this royal court, venerable sir, there exists abundant bullion and gold stored in vaults and depositories, and with such wealth we are capable of mollifying the enemies when they come, but there is no place for those battles of wealth no scope for them when aging and death are rolling in. As, as aging and death are rolling in on me, venerable sir, what else should be done but to live by the Dhamma, to live righteously, and to do wholesome and meritorious deeds? So it is, great king, so it is, great king. As aging and death are rolling in on you, what else should be done but to live by the Dhamma, to live righteously, to do wholesome and meritorious deeds. This is what the Blessed One said. Having said this, the Fortunate One, the Teacher, further said this. These are verses. Just as mountains of solid rock, massive, reaching to the sky, might draw together from all sides, crushing all in the four quarters, so aging and death come, rolling over living beings. Katiyas, Brahmas, Vesas, Suddhas, Chandalas, and scavengers. They spare none along the way, but come crushing everything. There's no ground there for elephant troops, for chariot troops and infantry. One can't defeat them by subterfuge or buy them off by means of wealth. Therefore, a person of wisdom here, out of regard for his own regard, uh, for his own good, steadfast should settle faith in the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha. When one conducts oneself by Dhamma with body, speech, and mind, they praise one here in the present life, and after death one rejoices in heaven. And then I'll also read Sangyutta <coughs> um, 3, which is uh, um, again the uh, King Pasenati. <coughs> At Savati, sitting to one side, King Basenity of Kosala said to the Blessed One, Venerable Sir, for one who has taken birth, is there anything other to expect than aging and death? For one who has taken birth, great king, there is nothing other to expect than aging and death. Even in the case of those affluent katiyas, rich with great wealth and property, with abundant gold and silver, abundant treasures and commodities, abundant wealth and grain, because they have taken birth, there is nothing other to expect than aging and death. Even in the case of those affluent Brahmins, affluent householders, rich with abundant wealth and grain, because they have taken birth, there is nothing other to expect than aging and death. Even in the case of those bhikkhus who are arahants, whose taints are destroyed, who have lived the holy life, done what had to be done, laid down the burden, 
reached their own goal, utterly destroyed the fetters of existence, and are completely liberated through final knowledge, even for them, this body is subject to breaking up, subject to, be, to being laid down. And it ends in uh, a short verse. <coughs> the beautiful chariots of kings wear out. This body, too, underco undergoes decay. But the Dhamma of the good does not decay, so the good proclaim along with the good. <coughs> so just those uh, very direct um, reflections on old age, sickness, and death. I mean, it's what we en encourage to to uh, and to, uh, to recollect. Excellent. So the next is from Sangyutta 48. Sutta number 41, and this is a, um, um, an excerpt from that sutta. <coughs> and the uh, Sangyutta 48 is the Indriya Sangyutta. And that... Uh, <coughs> Once when the Blessed One was li <laughs> living at Savati in the eastern monastery, the palace of Megara's mother, he had, <coughs> he had arisen from retreat in the evening and was sitting warming his back in the rays of the setting sun. The Venerable Ananda went up to him and paid homage. While he was rubbing the Blessed One's limbs, he said, It is wonderful, Lord, it is marvelous. Now the color of the Blessed One's skin is no more clear and bright. All his limbs are flaccid and wrinkled, his body is bent forward, and there seems a change in the sense faculties of his eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and bodily sensation. So it is, Ananda, so it is. Youth has to age, health has to sicken, life has to die. Now the color of my skin is no more clear and bright. All my limbs are flaccid and wrinkled. My body is bent forward, and there seems a change in the sense faculties of my eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and bodily sensations. So the Blessed One said, when the Sublime One had said this, the Master said further, Shame on you, sordid age, maker of ugliness. Age has now trampled down the form that once had grace. To live a hundred years is not to cheat decay. That gives quarter to none and tramples down all things. So that, uh, um, this the even the, even the Buddha, uh, as. Uh, special uh, a being uh, as he is still you see it gets old and the, the uh, you see it's getting closer to he's getting cl it doesn't actually say but it's you know, he's obviously um, getting to the very last years of his life and uh, and his uh, you know, his body starting to to uh, um, you know, show the uh, so the uh, vagaries of, of uh, having uh, been alive for a long period of time. And so that, uh, and it's, it's actually interesting that the, uh, um, 
of the commentary uh, is really reluctant to admit that the Buddha showed signs of aging. Um, that's kind of the, the commentarial take that it's only Ananda who could, could see this because of his uh, close proximity as, a, as, as his attendant and you know, as everybody else saw the Buddha as this radiant, youthful being. I mean, it's just is um, as much as the as much as the Buddha actually emphasized this and talked about it. Um, then even the the commentators to the uh, discourses and the kind of the holders of the of the lineage are just. I mean, it's just they're just resistant to the to that uh, to the teaching. <coughs> Any comments, questions? Pretty straightforward. Long forward. Is yeah. the chant we do with the five frequent recollections, is that from a sutta or is that compiled later? Uh, that, that's a sutta. That is a sutta. Um, I'm good for fives, um, but uh, uh, yeah, I mean it's 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 it is a it is a sutta that the Buddha would gave, encouraging um, the uh, that reflection on of those fundamentals of, of existence, old age, sickness, death, change, and coming. We're we're the owners of our of our actions, heirs to our actions, so that. Those are, uh, um, it's a fundamental of right view in that sense of that, that acknowledgement, acknowledgement and recognition of the, the, uh, and the yeah, fleetingness of, of life and then the, the reality of change and uncertainty uh, and then the taking responsibility for one's actions. And also in terms of how we view other beings, view the world around us, um, in the sense of that when one, right, and it's not just ourselves that are heir to our actions, everybody's heir to their actions. And, and uh, that's a basis for, uh, it's a traditional basis for establishing equanimity. Um, because usually we, View the le- view through view ourselves and view the world through the lens of personality and identity, and uh, and we you know, we get upset or we get infatuated or we get caught up in confusion um, as our reaction to other beings, but it's it is a manifestation of of their actions, and it's a this causal process that is is uh, is being illustrated all the time as opposed to ourselves as fixed personalities and others as fixed identities. So is that um, fixed recollection on common that also kind of creates a form of equanimity towards ourself but it's kind of a more it's also like mixed with heedfulness when it's directed at ourselves, but it's, it's so it's a little bit different when we direct it at ourselves and yeah. to others. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, very much so because that, that because then you 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 realize that oh I, I I do have some agency here. I'm not just a helpless victim of a circumstance out in the world or or being um, and battered by the the. Uh, uh, the kind of, of uh, um, seeing uh, weirdnesses of the universe that we live in. So there's, there is a, uh, um, there is this causal process that is yeah, our condition condition process that we are constantly engaging with and being uh, engaged upon. So it's an interact process. But yeah, it certainly gives us. Uh, a bit more motivation for for uh, for putting forth effort and and this 
establishing the sense of uh, wise consideration and a sense of urgency. is a uh, I didn't write it down <coughs> Majima 104 which is the Samagama Sutta and uh, this is an excerpt from from that. And again, this is uh, this the section is on old age, so it's also uh, um, some of the events. This is uh, particularly the uh, um, the passing away of Niganta Nataputta, who was the the head of the of the Jain um, uh, sect of, of Samanas. And uh, so that he was a, he was a contemporary uh, to the Buddha. And of course, his, um, say the Jain religion uh, is still um, visible in, in, uh, in India today. Once the Blessed One was living at Samagama in the Sakyan country, just after the Niganta Nataputta had died at Bhava. The Nigantas had split after his death into two factions, and they were brawling, wrangling, squabbling, and wounding each other with verbal arrows. You do not know this Dhamma and discipline. How will you get to know this Dhamma and discipline? Your way is wrong. My way is right. I am consistent. You are inconsistent. What should have been said first, you said last. What should have been said last, you said first. What you had thrashed out has been turned upside down. Your teaching has been refuted. You are worsted. Go and learn better or disentangle yourself if you can. That's a stock phrase for uh, when uh, um, either the uh, and the, uh, or other members of other sects are sort of uh, arguing with each other, or particularly over doctrine. It seemed as if there was internecine strife among the Niganta Nataputta's dis pupils, and his white-clothed lay disciples were as disappointed, dismayed, and disgusted with his pupils as they were with his ill-declared dhamma and discipline. That was one hard to penetrate, leading nowhere, unconducive to peace, proclaimed by one not fully enlightened, with its shrine now broken and left without a refuge. Then the novice Chunda, who had spent the rains at Pava, went to the venerable Ananda and told him what had happened. They went together to the Blessed One, and the Venerable Ananda informed him of what the novice Chunda had said. He added, <coughs> Lord, I thought, let there be no disputes when the Blessed One is gone. Disputes are for the misfortune and unhappiness of many, for the <coughs> harm, misfortune, and suffering of gods and men. Ananda, what is your, what is your opinion? These teachings that I have directly known and taught to you, I mean the four foundations of mindfulness, the four right endeavors, the four bases for success, the five spiritual faculties, the five powers, the seven enlightenment factors, and the noble eightfold path. Do you see even two bhikkhus, 
that describe them discordantly. No, Lord, but there are people who live submissive to the Blessed One now who might, when he is gone, create disputes in the Sangha about livelihood and about the code of monastic rules. Such disputes would be for the misfortune and unhappiness of many. Dispute over livelihood or over the code of monastic rules is trifling, Ananda. But should disputes arise in the Sangha about the path or the way of practice, such disputes as those would indeed be for the misfortune and unhappiness of many. So that, uh, to me, this is uh, um, uh, really worthy of note that uh, the Buddha draws attentions, attention to the basis of practice. So when he says of his teachings, he brings it back to those uh, bodhipakya dhammas, those these you know, the four foundations of mindfulness, four right endeavors, four bases for success, five spiritual faculties, five power, seven enlightenment factors, noble eightfold path. That is the uh, uh, what he draws attention to as his teaching. So that's more like the this these are the practices, these are the trainings, these are the what one can be doing as opposed to some aspect of, of uh, well, certainly in terms of, of course, the Buddha never really got into um, some kind of metaphysical sp speculations, or um, but uh, still, um, you know, there's aspects of the the teaching that that are. Uh, um, one w possibly um, get into conflict about, or but the Buddha is bringing it back to you know, this is what would maintain harmony, continuity, and and a clear sense of direction for the future. Also, just as a side note, the novice Chunda was Sariputta's brother. Um, they. Uh, Sariputta had three brothers and three sisters, and they all uh, they all ended up ordaining. Um, and uh, but is he's called the novice Chunda uh, because there was already uh, a, a senior um, among senior to the another elder Chunda, and so he ended up being Maha Chunda, and then uh, and then the novice Chunda. Yes, you do uh, to distinguish between them. Any comments? Uh, um, is somewhat long, and I f it's from Majima 12, and it's the Mahasi Hanada Sutta. It's the great discourse on the lion's roar, where the Buddha gives his kind of lion's roar of, of his accomplishment and his uh, yeah his place in the. Um, terms of um, the uh, uh, as a religious leader and teacher and uh, Nyanamoli tends to emphasize mostly the uh, the, uh, the the kind of practices that the Buddha took on, and which the Buddha describes in, in great detail, his asceticism, his, you know, his roughness and his scrupulousness and his seclusion, um, and uh, all the kind of hardships that he went through. But I think, you know, there's other aspects that I'd like to, to, uh, to 
to to draw on that I think are say as important if not more important so I'll come back to the the sutta itself so Mahima 12 thus have I heard on one occasion the blessed one was living at Vesali in the grove outside the city to the west now on that occasion Sunakata, son of the Lichavis, had recently left this Dhamma in discipline. He was making this statement before the Vesali assembly. The recluse Godama does not have any superhuman states, any distinction in knowledge and vision worthy of the noble ones. The recluse Godama teaches a Dhamma merely hammered out by reasoning, following his own line of inquiry as it occurs to him, and when he teaches the Dhamma to anyone, it leads him, when he practices it, to the complete destruction of suffering. So that um, Sunakata is disappointed that the Buddha doesn't, doesn't display any psychic powers and, and refuse to display them. Um, and, uh, uh, and then also, yeah, that it, mostly around that aspect of of uh, you know, wouldn't perform any yeah kind of miracles or feats of psychic powers and um, wouldn't sort of talk about the uh, uh, nature of the uh, like the origin of the of the uh, of the world the universe and uh, so he was very frustrated by that and and he he'd been or he wasn't just newly ordained he. He had been in the Sangha for some time and uh, uh, because he had been, uh, uh, like there's another uh, um, uh, sutta in the Patika Sutta in the Diga Nikaya. Uh, but he had also been, it said in the, uh, in the commentary that he had also been one of the early um, earlier, or at some point in time, doesn't actually specify. But anyway, he had been a, been an attendant uh, to the to the Buddha as well. Then, uh, sorry, okay. then when it was morning, the venerable sorry put the dress and taking his bowl and outer robe, went into Vesali for alms. Then he heard Sunakata, son of the Lichavis making this statement before the Vesali assembly. When he had wandered for alms in Vesali and had returned from his alms round after his meal, he went to the Blessed One, and after paying homage to him, he sat down at one side and told the Blessed One what Sunakata was saying. Blessed One said, Sariputta, the misguided man Sunakata is angry and his words are spoken out of anger. Thinking to discredit the Tathagata, he actually praises him. For it is praise of the Tathagata to say of him, when he teaches the Dhamma to anyone, it leads him when he practice it, practices it to the complete destruction of suffering. Sariputta, this misguided man, Sunakata, will never infer of me according to Dhamma that blessed one is accomplished, fully enlightened, perfect in true knowledge and conduct, uh, sublime, uh, knower of the worlds, incomparable leader of persons to be tamed, teacher of gods and humans, enlightened, blessed. I mean, the, uh, it's that. Iti piso vakava alaham samma sambuto vi chantana sampada, the epithets that refer to the, to the Buddha that we chant. And he will never infer of me according to Dhamma. That blessed one enjoys the various kinds of supernormal power. Um, having been one, he becomes many, all the different types of uh, supernormal powers. He wields bodily master, mastery even as far as the Brahma world. And he will never infer of me according to Dhamma uh, with the divine ear element, which is purified. So these are the different uh, types of of uh, uh, 
psychic powers, and he will never infer me according to the Dhamma. That blessed one <coughs> encompasses with his own mind the minds of other beings, other persons. <coughs> he understands <coughs> a, a mind affected by lust as affected by lust, a mind unaffected by lust, and just like aspects of the I, in the uh, Chittanupasana of the Satipatthana all the aspects of understanding of mind. Uh, so that uh, he'll never uh, give him that mm, credit or due. Sariputta, the Tathagata has these, these ten Tathagata's powers, possessing which he claims the herd leader's place, roars his lion's roar in the assemblies, and sets rolling the wheel of Brahma. Sort of Brahma, in this sense, the, the greatest, uh, the highest. Here, the Tathagata understands as it actually is the possible as possible and the impossible as impossible. And that is the Tathagata's power that the Tathagata has. Um, so, that, that sense of understanding the, the, the nature, nature of things. Uh, and, but mostly around the correlations of causes and conditions, causes and effects. What what is what? How how do things actually work? Again, the Tathagata understands as it actually is the results of actions undertaken, past, future, and present, by way of possibilities and causes. That too is the Tathagata's power. Again, the Tathagata understands as it actually is the ways leading to all destinations. That too is the Tathagata's power in that terms of destinations, in terms of, mm, well, uh, mainly it would be to f in terms of rebirth, uh, but also in terms of the you know, res mm, results of actions. Where is it going to take one? The, again, the Tathagata understands, as it actually is, the world with its many and different elements. That too is a Tathagata's power. Again, the Tathagata understands, as it actually is, how beings have different inclinations. That too is a Tathagata's power. Again, the Tathagata understands, as it actually is, the disposition of the faculties of other beings, other persons. And so those are, I mean, obviously those are uh, linked together, tied together. Um, but it's, uh, it's this sense of very, very clear understanding of the temperaments and nature of beings and their, um, yeah, their different faculties and their different dispositions. Again, the Tathagata understands, as it actually is, the defilement, the cleansing, <coughs> and the emergence in regard to the jhanas, liberations, concentrations, and attainments. That, too, is the Tathagata's power that the Buddha completely understands the, uh, the, the, this aspect of it in terms of meditations, liberations, um, and various forms of attainments, um, what their you know, divan, their drawback is, their purification, and the, uh, the emerging from that. Again, the Tathagata recollects his manifold past lives, so that's a Tathagata's power, thus with their aspects and particulars, he recollects his manifold past lives. That too is a Tathagata's power. Uh, again, uh, with the divine eye purified, sees beings passing away and reappearing, inferior and superior, fair and ugly, fortunate and unfortunate, and he understands how beings pass on according to their actions. That too is a Tathagata's power. Again, this is the tenth one. Again, by realizing for himself with direct knowledge that the Tathagata here and now enter, enters upon and abides in the deliverance of mind and deliverance by wisdom that are taintless with the destruction of the taints. That, too, is a Tathagata's power that the Tathagata has, by virtue of which he claims the herd leader's place, roars his lion's roar in the assemblies, and sets rolling the wheel of Brahma. The, ta the Tathagata has these ten Tathagata's powers, possessing which 
he claims the herd leader's place, roars his lion's roar in the assemblies and sets rolling the wheel of Brahma. Sariputta. When I know and see that, should anyone say of me, the recluse Gotama does not have any superhuman states, any distinction in knowledge and vision um, that, he, that he teaches, that he teaches a Dhamma merely hammered it out by reasoning, following his own line of evolution, unless he abandons that assertion and that state of mind and relinquishes that view, then as surely as if he had been carried off and put there, he will wind up in hell, just as a bhikkhu possessed of concentration, uh, of virtue, concentration, and wisdom would here and now enjoy final knowledge. So it will happen in this case, I say, that unless he abandons that assertion and that state of mind and relinquishes that view, then as surely as it had been carried off and put there, he will wind up in hell. And so that, that sounds pretty um, strong or pretty uh, um, uh, content. But it's it's like if, if somebody is so, um, um, one is so, has that, proximity and access and um, opportunity to be close to the Buddha and to the Buddha Dhamma and Sangha and then is becomes obsessed with um, anger or obsessed with with their own particular view um, that is a huge obstacle uh, uh, to a person's um, um, not just their current uh, state of being but that affects where they where they they end up that's why the Buddha is, is like uh, talking about you know the nature of like greed and desire uh, sensual desire uh, yeah it's it's uh, it it it's got kind of bad results, not great results, but it's and, and it's difficult to to uh, to work with. The anger is is got a ter really terrible results. It's easier to um, to work through it to relinquish it, but delusion has catastrophic results and is really difficult to to uh, to re to free the heart from so that um, and that's what takes one to uh, unfortunate um, results unfortunate uh, destinations just left with that view but then he's spreading yeah. it about and making a point of going yes. to people. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So that's bad. And, and then the other aspect is like, it's not hopeless. Like the Buddha says, if he relinquishes that view, yeah. then he might be okay. Yeah. So it's not like he's making a declaration. Yeah, he's he will be held, held. But if he, if he doesn't relinquish that view, yeah. then it's like, he still has a chance if he is willing to do that. And of course, he probably won't. Yeah. But I don't think he did. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the historical, it's more historical account is, is, uh, is that the, uh, I think he held on to his view. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's still a fair bit to go in this suit. I think I might leave it there. Any further questions? What was the four right exertions from that first? Four right exertions? That's the uh, four right efforts. Oh, okay. Uh, say that the, when we chant, then the, uh, the uh, um, <coughs> Eightfold Path, that the, uh, um, it's that, uh, um, that those four right efforts. And, uh, but again, it's sort of, I think, that, that, that when the Buddha is, is uh, uh, talking about the, uh, you know, what's most 
in, most important. Uh, it's uh, it's those 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 uh, those aspects of, of practice.